welcome. This is question number 10 for the Integrated Math 2, subpart 2, finally, uh, practice test for the 10 right of your TCAP. This is question number 10. Subpart 2 allows calculator. So for this question, um, they want to consider this equation, which I've written here. I, read a, I wrote a few things a little early so I can make an explanation and not waste so much time. Which equation has the same solutions as the given equation? Now looking at the question, you'll notice that they have squared terms here, so x minus 6 times x minus 6. So this is a completing the square style question. That's how they want you to solve it. Because they're not just, um, the easy move might be to move uh, this over here and then try to graph it. And that's another thing you could do, by the way. If you wanted to move this over here and graph it and just look and choose uh, and move these C values, or sorry, the constant terms over to the other side, look at the graph, compare, that's something you could consider doing, but I'll do it the completing the squared weight version first, and then we'll talk about the other thing you could do. So when I'm completing the square, my ultimate goal is to create squares like they've done here, and I don't know why this little square is there, it shouldn't be, but x plus 3 squared is the same as x plus 3 times x plus 3. And if I multiply all that out, you'll notice you'll end up combining these two 3x terms. And the big deal here is this b value that you're looking for is really the term here times 2, because you're adding that term twice. The 9 is whatever this term is squared. So I want to, my first move after I get everything over to, uh, everything organized, so I have this constant term over here, is I want to take what the b term was and divide it by 2 because 6 divided by 2 gives me the 3 that I'm looking for. And then eventually I'm going to end up squaring it to give me that term that I'm going to add in. But before I even do that, I need to get rid of 49. So minus 49 on both sides. So if I have 22 minus 49, I get negative 27 there. And then x squared minus 12x. So as I was saying before, we're going to take this b value, and I need to do this. Bloop. Uh, I need to take the negative 12, divide by 2, and that gives me negative 6, which will come in handy in just a minute, so I'll need that. And then I want to do negative 6 squared. Remember this? That gives me my c value, and it's 36. So what I'm going to do in the short term is add this 36 to both sides of the equation. Once I combine these together, I get 9 over here. What do I do to the other side? Well, now it's ready to go. Remember how I said that if you did this number times 2, it gives you the middle one. So we found it over here. It was a negative 6, and you square it to get this. Well, this is the number I'm going to use to create my squared term, x minus 6 squared. So now I have my answer, and that's all it took to get there. Now, what happens if that's not your thing? Some people don't like completing the square and or they can't remember how to do it. In this case you have an out, a little bit of an out. I'm actually going to take my original equation and if you do, you're really into um, completing the square then you're probably done with this question. Um, but what you could do is subtract 22 from both sides I get 27 on this side so I end up with x squared minus 12x plus 27 equals 0. What we're going to do now is graph. Maybe. Yeah, there we are. We're definitely graphing. <laughs> Let me erase this. Now I'm going to want to change my you'll notice that this goes down to 27. I'm going to change my window a little bit. Uh, I'm going to leave the x because I don't think that's going to change. This part I might change a little bit. So let's make the y minimum value negative 40 and the y maximum value 40 as well. 
And since the X here has a 12, maybe I'll change these to 20. Now I'm ready to graph. And if I'm wrong, I can always just change the window later. The higher level in math you get, the better it is to change the window so you can actually see what the problem looks like. Oops. So I was way off on where the Y value was. So I'm going to change that window again. Oh, I put the Y maximum at 4. What was I thinking? Uh, let's make it at 20. And we'll put the Y minimum at 20 as well. And then graph it. There we go. So if I can find this point, that will give me the uh, the vertex. And you could try tracing it. It'll probably get you somewhere close to it. Or you could hit the second trace and just find the minimum value, which would be a vertex in this case. Left bound means whatever number to the left of the thing. They're just trying to get a zone of where they're supposed to look for it because you could have multiple graphs crossing over each other a lot, so they're trying to pinpoint what you're specifically asking for. So let's say 6 and negative 9. That's my vertex form. That would be H and K. And if I'm going to substitute it into the form, the vertex form, plus K goes in as minus 9. X minus H means this is the opposite, so X minus 6. And then this is equal to Y. But for our specifications, we want to set it equal to 0. So it's equal to 0. And I'm going to add 9 to both sides. And I get x minus 6 squared. I can get it to right, I do. Is equal to 9. So there you go. So another way you can get to the answer that might make it easier for you, just graph it and then just take a look at it if you have access to that. If not, you can do completing the square. I'm sure there's other things that you could do to try to get to that number as well, but those are the ones I'm going to cover in this.